I'll take you for a ride on the devil's ship I'll take you for a ride where you sink or swim Now come with me and let this story begin <clears throat> So you was here last time you've become like the sort of tony scarface of podcasting a little bit <laughs> a little bit yeah i killed most people that were competing against me <laughs> you're going in and sending poseidon in to yeah, yeah. do assassinations on competitive podcast studios yeah. this is epic this but guy. it's mad right this is makes you feel right at home yeah it's lovely man yeah, and i and the bordel that you got to see on um on friday night that's mike's club mm. epic place too they got to show you around and stuff that's State of the art for, for stand up, yeah. And you do, you how many podcasts do you do now? Eight. Eight. Yeah. How on earth do you fill eight podcasts with interesting stuff? Well, the thing is, they're all different, right? So English mm. and French, it's easy. Different yeah. guests, yeah. So you play off the guests. The Just uh, well, talk about whatever they do or whatever. Yeah. So you're interested in that. And you're learning, uh, and then do you the, prepare for the interviews or do you just wing it? I mostly you wing it. read the it? Wikipedia page? No, never. I, I don't like to prepare that way. I like to prepare if I know and I'm curious about something. Yeah. But I don't want it forced. I don't want it to be like, uh, so that album, like I mm. hate that shit. Just shoot the shit and people like the real person. That's what people enjoy. Just mm. how they are really. Because all the other stuff is done on other interviews. The well, when is your stuff coming out? This, it's all yeah, done Yeah, it's all boring and yeah. all that fucking, it feels and like. And I don't care about a, that. For a lot of press, a lot of mainstream press, like talk shows and stuff, they feel like a sort of uh uh, studio commodity sort of promotion manufacture. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, and the next movie we're selling, and the next thing we're selling, you know what I mean? It exactly. does feel like you're at a flea market or something. Very much like that vibe, yeah. Especially when they're so, um, they're so contrived, like the anecdotes and everything else. Did you see that Nathan Fielder thing? He's from Ontario, isn't he, Nathan Fielder? That comedian. It's Nathan Fielder. You'd love him, right? He's a very clever Canadian fella. And he has a, a uh, he has a show called Nathan for You. Oh yeah, him, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, the guy's hilarious. Yeah. He went on Jimmy Kimmel, but he did a sort of a statistic algorithmic analysis of the anecdotes that perform the best across all of the Jimmy Kimmels, and then he basically came up with a scenario where he could tell the truth and tell an anecdote that had all of those elements. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. usually, if it's a famous person saying, "Oh." I got uh, I got arrested. I got pulled over by a cop. You know what I mean? So he adds in that element. And then he makes the whole thing come true by, like, hiring a policeman, doing all this thing. And, like, it's just... I don't want to give it away. And also, I don't remember all the details. But He's a funny guy, though. It's highly, highly funny on, on the YouTube. I, I remember one of his episodes. I don't know if you saw this, where he... The dangerous thing of... Do, he didn't want to be a registered sex offender. So he had to magically get out of his handcuffs. And they had him in a schoolyard. There was a robot that was going to undo his pants. And there was a bunch of children right there. And he goes, I need to figure out a way in one minute to <laughs> to get myself out of these shackles. Or else I'm going to be a registered sex offender. Because that robot's going to pull out my... <laughs> that was great. He's, he's hilarious. Uh, he's clever, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. very, very clever. I like his deadpan style. Yeah. Yeah, he's de there's there's definitely something a bit spectrum about him. Yeah, but he's in films now and stuff as well. He was in um, what's that James Franco one where he played Tommy something? What was that movie called? You? Come on, Poseidon. Poseidon should be figuring this out, but I don't know. Um, I haven't the the last I heard of James Franco is that they were trying to cancel the, him. The so, disaster artist. Oh, that, that was great. Oh yeah, he was. Nathan yeah, yeah, he was, was in, that. in that. He was yeah. in that. Yeah. Did you ever watch the room? The, the thing that that's based on. No, I couldn't get through. I saw I saw bits of it. You couldn't get through because it, it was it made you cringe. It's just boring. <laughs> of course, it's boring, but it's it's insane. I'm sure it'd be. I'm sure there's a sort of activity based fun time if you all go and watch it in a cinema together. You Correct. Get a lot of joy or you're drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just sort of out of curiosity, around the time I watched the disaster artist, predictably, just watched a few bits of it on YouTube and was like, "What is this? What is this? <laughs> it's boring. It's completely <laughs> I don't insane." Get all of the I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, just on on its own, the source material thing, I don't really get it, to be honest. The source material was trash. Yeah. But the, the guy who made it was so delusional. Tommy Wiseau. He that was couldn't believe it. Yeah, Tommy Wiseau. So yeah. because of his delusion and he was pushing it so much, it made people appreciate the piece of hot garbage that he created. <laughs> Yeah, because he unintentionally made something so bad, and then he rebadged it, it after, right? Yeah, he rebadged it. it. Was like, you know, thank you for watching my comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at first, he was saying how it's a serious romantic yeah. movie, an important story. Yeah, he's like, no, I'm just meta. No, I was just playing around, man. Yeah, yeah. Franco was fantastic in that movie, though. Dude, he was—he's was, a cracking actor. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. 
Yeah, I feel he's a little bit underrated. Sometimes I don't know when you got the you got the good looks. You know, he, he looks a bit like Cristiano Ronaldo, so he kind of has to get be people. You know, it's harder to relate to, to a man who's that sort of leading man esque, you know. Yeah, I suppose that's why Keanu Reeves took a vow of silence ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Keanu Reeves no apparently offense, one Keanu. of the nicest guys, one of the oh, nicest yeah? guys in Hollywood. Yeah, really, he, he talks when he's not on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah, he, do, he he actions speak louder than words. Yeah, he does well, a lot clearly. for people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's the motto of uh, Keanu Reeves' sort of later career. It, Listen, guys, I don't need to talk because action speaks louder than words. Just watch me beat up and shoot all these bad fellas. Yeah, it's funny that he always gets cast as a Keanu type. Well, he always he, gets cast as Keanu. It's the only way. You know, you're not, <laughs> you're not gonna. You're not going to cast him in a, a, a hugely sort of... Well, you know, he was a voice in Toy Story. I don't know. I don't know his back Buddha. catalog. What? He was Buddha. He was he Buddha? He Buddha. Yeah. Where? In a movie called Little, called Little Buddha. It's called Little Buddha. <laughs> by Bernardo Bertolucci. And was he big Buddha? He was kind of teenage Buddha. <laughs> he was mid Buddha. <laughs> what are all these poor people doing here? They're like this. Did he, did he do, yeah. did he do a fake Indian accent? But this was the bit of Buddha where it's a, it's a it's an Italian filmmaker, but Western sort of who's into Buddhism. But he, this is the part of Buddha where he goes, "What is this thing you call suffering?" <laughs> and because the Italian filmmaker, he's always making Buddha talk with his hands. <laughs> what is this thing you yeah. call suffering? They're like this guy Keanu. He's got this faraway look in his eye. He's perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have no idea. That's, he's mid Buddha. He played, but and the film is fantastic. It's actually a really great film. I mean, it's a bit s silly because they blacked up Keanu Reeves to play Buddha. It's brown you know, face. It's brown face. It's brown, it's brown face. Indian him. faced him, but you know, time to be alive. It was there. Yeah, that was the times <laughs> that was in it, and um, <laughs> which came, which came first? That, he going that, crazy. That or, uh, a pot of whiskey in his hand. What? Which came first, that film or Gandhi? I think Gandhi uh, came first. Yeah, open? Gandhi came first with Ben <laughs> Kingsley. Well, you got to open it. I'm on, I'm, I'm on camera. So, so brownface was a thing in Hollywood at the time. But you know, but, but Ben Kingsley is Persian. Is he? Of course he is. Why do you say of course he is? Like Ben Kingsley him. is regularly <laughs> yeah, Persian. Yeah, look at him. Like he's, he's clearly... I, I'm he's not the sure Ayatollah of King Zola. He's Ben Kingsley. He's English. He's I think he's, he's English in origin in yeah. terms of where he was born, I think. But his I think his heritage is Indian or Persian. I so it was it was I, less I, I kind of blackface Indian. for him. But he's a great actor. Thank you, sir. Would that go well with coffee? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Poseidon, Irish coffee, basically. Poseidon was trying to explain these cups on the way over in the car, and frankly, I was I was too busy uh, trying to put my heart back in back in my chest from the top. All of the my Greek throat. coffee cups. Yeah, the New York coffee cups. These are New York uh, Greek thing. Well. In New York, whenever you get a coffee somewhere to go, they all have these coffee cups, but they're uh, obviously styrofoam or plastic. Oh, yeah. uh, we got the glass ones here. Uh, ceramic, rather. Very nice. Yeah, nice it was... Touch. How many years ago? It was in the 60s or something. So one diner had ordered all kinds so that they can sell them, and then they just caught on. So now everyone uses these cups, and the design is the Greek coffee cup. You don't have to get a Greek place. You get it at any diner. That's beautiful. But, yeah. Do you know what I read recently? It was quite interesting for for all you who are into a bit of general knowledge, that the... T is actually, on the, on the subject of Greeks and Buddha, right? What a beautiful link this is. Tell me. That the this, this sort of draftsmanship of Buddhist sculpture, of Buddha himself, you know, the one that probably Westerners would be more for, familiar with, which is, you know, big fat fella wearing a loincloth, smiling, or looking kind of deep in thought. Me on the weekends, yeah. That was done by Gre <laughs> that was done by Greeks in Northwest India first after Gre Alexander the Great. Yes, ah, after Alexander the Great, he was like, "Let's all let's all meld and be big yeah, one happy yeah, Alexander yeah. family." The Greeks and the Persians and everything else, but of course, the Greeks continued the migration, ended up in uh, the area where the Kabul River flows from Afghanistan into northern India, and that's where they were involved or they were sort of immersed in the atmosphere of the Gandhara Buddhas. And that's who sort of created that very Asian piece of iconography. Isn't that interesting? That is very interesting, yeah. How the did it spread after? The fucking Greeks. How did it spread after? They just started... The fucking Greeks! Around? They invented gayness! <laughs> Amongst other things. What was that? Sorry, what was it? What were you saying? How did they spread it? How did they spread what? The, how did they spread the new version of that Buddha? 
because they're the best sculptorists. So you know? people just copy that. Yeah, they just taught you know other people how to do it and everything else. But that was the origin of that tra- uh, tradition. I heard weird. I also heard that the one of the the terracotta armies, you know, those uh, oh, yeah. st- same Chinese thing. thing. Yeah, that they found that there's some links to Greek sculptors. Oh, but, really? Yeah, but it just baffles the mind that someone would go that far to help them. But you never know. I'm not saying it. I'm I, just... You know, I think that's in human beings' nature, that they just drift. They drift know? and like, hey, I'm going to help you make some statues. Yeah, they always have. Marco, If Marco Polo went to China to get pasta... Yeah, and then he he, ba- he took credit for it. He was like, it's called pasta. I got this. Right? I, I came this. up with it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, wait a minute. No, you didn't, you're gonna, Marco Polo. You're going to love it. You're going to love the it. The Asians came up with that. The well, Chinese. It's like, but no, we used tomato sauce instead of soy sauce. Like, we perfected it is what we did. <laughs> Wish they did. Yeah. Oh, man. Italians know how to pasta. They know how to pasta. Yeah. You're not into football, you are. Well, you say that, Pantelis, but the European Championships basically got me in its web. Oh, I was really hooked. Oh. I was really, ho- and then watched like one of those retrospectives when Greece won it, like two thousand four, eight, twelve. Oh, two thousand four, yeah. yeah. Against all the odds, who were they playing in the final again? Italy or someone? Portugal. Fucking hell! Uh, how did they Cristiano do that? Cristiano Ronaldo. How yeah. did they manage to b- beat the whole of Europe? Or it, half of Europe. It was one of those perfect timing things. The team was solid. They were good players, but also they just meshed well. And they had a German coach, because it's the only way you get Greeks to listen. And uh, <laughs> <I put laughs> Watch true. a German. Well, dude, no, no, you can't have... Because ha- every time we had Greek coaches, there was always uh, they went to the uh, World Cup in 94 in... in uh, I believe it was in the US. And they had to face Argentina and Nigeria. They got hammered every game because they were just going out. They were part of... There was, you know, people were... Greeks, local Greeks were talking about how... Yeah, we saw the soccer team. They were, they were out. They were partying. They were picking up women, drinking. They, and then they were going two hours later. Oh, shit, we got to go play. Uh, we got to go play Argentina. Well, like, <laughs> in, in the Euros, in the semis, England versus Denmark, I bet on Denmark before I heard that in the previous game, one of them had a full cardiac arrest. Yeah, he died pitch. on the field. Yeah, and they brought him back. He died on the pitch and they brought him back to life. Yeah. And as they were wheeling him off the pitch, there was pictures of him. And he's awake and conscious. And yeah, yeah, else. that was great. Because when, when he was that, da- well, yeah, when he was, was done, like, yeah. I, I lost twenty dollars on those f- fucking malingers. The Danes, <laughs> no, but the Danes could have won that if it wasn't for that penalty, which I still believe was not a penalty. No, yeah, and uh, also the, I don't know if their fitness was as much as they're coming England's, back to life. The England team, they didn't seem as fit. No one I mean, on exactly the English team dying. dropped dead on the field. Exactly. So I can guarantee yeah. that. <laughs> that definitely lowers the fitness average. But resurrected though, <laughs> he was resurrected though. He was resurrected. Yeah. Eric yeah. Christensen. That's God. his name. And then all of his his teammates gathered around him like a little Yeah, little to nest. cover him because it was because they thought he was gone. Like it, it looked bad. And they didn't like the fact that the cameras and the people could see him. It's it's, it's unbecoming. And I'm with yeah, him. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, the way there was the way they were standing around him, it seemed like this happened in practice all the time. <laughs> Yeah, people don't appreciate miracles. Could anymore. you imagine if that's what, like, ah, oh, Eric's, oh, Eric's again. <laughs> dead again. <laughs> Why does he keep doing this? Why does he keep dying? Yeah. <laughs> <If> he, <laughs> Why does he keep dying? If yeah. he keeps dying, he's going to lose his, his place on the start in the Danish team. But it's funny because when they got him up, they, I, I like guys like him. Like, he's, he's, um, he seemed to have a good character because he goes, what are you guys doing here? All right, I'm fine. Get back out there and play the game. <laughs> You're like, and then the team went back like, and we're they not continued. Pl- we're not playing cricket, Eric. Yeah. We're playing soccer. Yeah, like, no, no, it doesn't continue. Just lay down. I'm fine. And he has a <laughs> now he has a defibrillator permanently. Oh, man. Yeah. Put he, it, that, he can't, surely can't play uh, top-level professional football with a pacemaker. Can well, he? that's Can the thing. He? The Italian league just said no. They said you cannot return. You can't play here professionally. For yeah, your team, unless li- you take it out. It's a liability. Yeah. Unless you take it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have no nothing making yeah, the pace. You can, still, you can still play. You can still yeah. play. So unless you take it out, and then they're like this. <laughs> and Go I, ahead. Ironically, Eric take Christensen, is one, he's one of the midfield pacemakers of, of <laughs> yeah. the Danish team. Yeah. But uh, it's crazy. I, I read it today. They go, you can't unless you take it out. And I'm like, that's kind of aggressive. <laughs> That's well, like going to a Paralympian and you're like, unless you remove your extra limbs, you can't play here. It's like, well, I need them. <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's into interesting territory there. Because at what point, you know, at what point do you qualify for a different league? Do you, know you think I mean? it's performance enhancing? No, but I mean, it, you know, there is such a thing as the Paralympics. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> where's the line? I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing about this. But the- Eric Christensen now has something... 
a, essentially a, a, a device to keep the pace of his heart because his heart is at risk of either losing pace or stopping or whatever else. So I don't think it would make him superhuman, the pacemaker. But would it qualify him for a different league? It might because I know that in the Paralympics, there's a lot of cheating that goes on. There's a, a US, <laughs> there's an American comedian, Josh what Blue. a claim, yeah. ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh, let me tell you. All our careers ruined in one sentence. So, so Josh Blue, he's, he's a comedian. <laughs> uh, he's done two drink minimum before. Those cheating <laughs> You're gonna love disabled this. bastards. He was playing on the US Paralympic soccer team. Right. And he went to the Olympics in 2004, I think. <laughs> and he faced the Russian national team. Soccer. Yeah. And they, you know, the American team ha had like, you know, people with one leg. Yeah. Uh, mental. Like it was, it was a Paralympic team that like they were all a band of misfits. And then, <laughs> but then the, <laughs> the Russian minute. team, the Russian Let's team, listen, 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 <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah, the Russian team though, their handicaps were some guy's arm is a little longer than the other. <laughs> like That's they, what I'm saying. They, and they destroyed Ooh. them. They, he goes, these guys were beat the shit out of it. Is it is it an independently reviewed thing? They're like, well, who is there an independent review, like a sort of a Paralympics FIFA that says, no, he's not. Paralyzed enough. I, it, there should be, but I don't know how you gauge enough. that. I don't know how you gauge that because what Josh describes, Josh says, we were actually <laughs> handicapped and they weren't. Imagine, <laughs> and they beat the shit out of here's us. Here's a really good idea for a movie, right? You got a Russian guy and he's almost good enough to make the Russian team. <laughs> so he and just he cuts off a finger. three fingers that's off. What, that's what they do. <laughs> no, they no. don't. Yes, people do that. Yeah, people are assholes, yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I... I am on the Pantelis podcast. Do I know it? To share the views extolled on this this mad no I'm only joking. You do not share the views that the Paralympics should that, be that an Russians, even playing field and we can't have these Russians fake uh, <laughs> handicapping us. <laughs> that Russians regularly maim themselves in order to qualify for the, for the they may not disabled maim, Olympics. But uh, they try to get they try to get as many medals as they could. I heard one Russian fella chopped his thumbs off and stitched them on the opposite hand. <laughs> <laughs> just to get on the team but all that's crazy like imagine Paralympic water polo I always said that must be the most dangerous sport on the planet what <laughs> like that just Why? think Paralympic water polo you're trying to swim you're missing some limbs you don't know who's going to make it yeah. it's a war of attrition I mean, like two teams go into the pool <laughs> one might come back it's crazy maybe one and a half yeah well, exactly all that stuff's dangerous it takes a lot like I th already the training <laughs> And then the risk, but surely the training mitigates the risk by the fact that they've <laughs> they've learned to tread water with one leg and a bionic leg or whatever. You tell that to bionic Eric Christensen. <laughs> what? Bionic fins. Bionic yeah. fins. Yeah, why not? In water polo, Still that'll be dangerous. interesting. You don't think so? Advantage. Tell that to Oscar Pretorius's wife. Is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he has. They sort of look a bit like thin fins. And he murdered someone. Yeah, but that's not because he's paraplegic. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think those are related. I'm just saying, even a man with f blades for feet could yeah. commit murder. Well, yeah, and he didn't even use the blades. He used a gun. Which is odd, right? He should have used the... Yeah. You know, you've got those giant machetes on yeah. the ends of your legs, Oscar. If you're going to be a villain, be a super villain. <laughs> you know, like, you know, in, in uh, recent James Bond culture, the character Oddjob. Yes. Who had a razor sharp hat. Yeah, yeah. You know? I can appreciate that. The hat murders. You know, because if Oscar Pretorius did an odd job, he would have he would have had to throw one of them like a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> but then he can't run to you. Well, you know, if it's a boomerang, it comes back, isn't it, man? It comes yeah. back to him. Those things are not boomerangs though. <laughs> Those things are, they're they're little they're like little platforms. But yeah, that guy's a piece of garbage. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Yeah, he murdered his wife. Oh, I know nothing about it really. No, huh? He he shot her through the door. Yeah, uh, through the bathroom door. Through the bathroom something. door, and he what? pretended like, oh, people broke in. He was trying to lie that he thought people broke in, and he was shooting the but like, villains. But is, isn't it odd? You'd ask yourself, <laughs> if you if you were wanting to kill someone, right? There are you, better ways to do it. Uh, yeah, and and surely more um, risk free. I mean, surely if you're shooting through the door of a bathroom, there's a million ways which you can miss said person that you're trying to kill. Yeah, you know what? So. That's a tricky one. I don't know. That's a strange because, like, it, it, put yourself in front of the door, right? Yeah. 
And now, Oscar Pretorius, he probably makes a few quid. His bathroom's probably quite large. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The bathroom en suite. Don't know how big it is. That'd be an interesting... Poseidon! Can you Google the size of Oscar Pretorius' bathroom? Crime scene, please. Uh, right? Because if you were to... Right, just take the, the sadness out of it for yeah, a second. Yeah. But if there's a person wanting to kill another person, they're behind a door. <laughs> <laughs> how the to fuck a big you, room. How are you sure that you're getting them? How are you Maybe sure he that waited you're and the second the handle was turning, so he knew, okay, she's coming out. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Is that true? Did she get, was she killed? Well, as she, was she was killed. Well, I don't know as, they didn't describe that, but they said she was killed through the door, so I'm assuming. Wow. Yeah. That's, what a strange what case. She He's a strange case. What did she do? Yeah. That's the kind of questions people should be asking. <laughs> well, what did she do though? I mean, what did she do to deserve it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like, look, if, if the Finn guy is angry, she must have, I don't know what she did, but whatever she did, <laughs> I don't think merited shooting her. A divorce oh. would have been better. Yeah. I mean, you know, were they just an right? unha unhappy couple? Yeah. Probably people. That's ridiculous. If he really had to go pee, on, Poseidon, and he's like, if you go run to the bathroom before I do, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm dying for a piss. <laughs> I, I will fuck. What do you want, Poseidon? It's actually bathroom. a medium sized bathroom. What does that mean? What does medium mean? It's in South so, Africa. What's medium sized in South, in South Africa? Africa? I don't know. So, like, take like a small bathroom <laughs> and then like double it in size. <laughs> It's too small That's bathroom, not bro. True, because a lot you've all been in a large bathroom where it's way too large. There's yeah. too much space in there. Yeah, but it's and all it's just a toilet in one corner. Yeah, it just falls into large, but <laughs> yeah. that's excessive. Yeah, there's excessive. Uh, so basic, okay, I'm how many the, steps from the we, toilet? We, to we the want square sink. footage. I, I'm seeing. I'm <laughs> seeing the picture. Basically, in the bathroom was a door for just the toilet bowl, and it was through that door. So the room also was very tight. Yeah, yeah. So it was very easy. The she could not escape. Yeah, it was oh. four, four bullets. That was a murder. I'd say. Yeah. Or bullets and, he, and he's shot through a door yeah yep. he shot hit, through a door hit. i mean yeah, look I mean, he's an olympian he's 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 impressive he's I'm yeah he's impressive he is. real quick well you know when he's not murdering people when he's not murdering that's the shitty thing the oj thing yeah it's the oj thing it's just he was very good at football and then he went and brutally murdered two people <laughs> well yeah. allegedly you know yeah. i don't want i don't want oj's lawyers you know after me i'm sure they're still quite litigious yeah <laughs> He, he he went to jail again for stealing his own merch. So I don't yeah, know how he did. good. He, he, he really? apparently in Vegas, he set up a thing where he's like, "Oh, I'd like to buy some of that merch." Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. someone else to call this guy, who he believed had stolen lots of merchandise from him of himself. So they uh, they agreed to meet in a hotel room in Vegas, and they did. And then apparently, uh, uh, OJ pulled a gun on the guy, like to get back his yeah. merch or he, what he thought he owned, yeah. and. Uh, the the judge sent him off for eight years. I watched that documentary. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. This guy had a crazy life. <laughs> yeah. It's mad. You're like, dude, <laughs> what's going on in your head? Where I mean, I, I suppose financial stress. You know what I mean? He's he's got limited options. If you're going willing to go to that level of like holding a guy at gunpoint when you're famous, OJ Simpson. When you have all people, how you're OJ Simpson. Are you gonna get away with this? Not he's really. pointing the gun. He's like. Are you stealing your own merch back from me and your OJ Simpson? No one's ever going to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know. It sounds too ludicrous. It sounds completely ludicrous. But he would know the legal system, right? He's been in it for so many he years. He would, yeah. Like, he'd be like, all right. And you know what was fascinating in that documentary as well is that he, uh, he would sign pictures of himself in prison, mm. right? Or in jail, I suppose, awaiting his verdict. And then he would also sometimes let himself in the back of, say, conventions, sports conventions or whatever else, quickly set up a little OJ kiosk and then sell as many signed photographs as he could before, uh, before they kicked him out. Yeah, before like, wait, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't that, that's like, that's, that's a mover and a shaker, man. It's a tough life. He's, he, had some serious, he had some serious legal bills for Kim Kardashian's uncle. Yeah, no, he had a lot of legal bills. And you know what's crazy is people accept that more so they're more likely to allow someone that we're pretty sure murdered people uh back into society even after stealing even for killing but if a comedian or an actor says a joke or something mm. they'll lose their mind they'll be like that can't stand he should never have a career again we're such a weird we're in such a weird time right now where the culture wars are at full with, yeah because with with the oj thing it was representative of civil rights as well what was going on in america yeah and i think the mo most of the Jurors were black, I think. So it I think was, he owes Rodney King everything. So, it, oh it, yeah, well, yeah, if Rodney know, King I, wasn't beat up, yeah. man, there's no way OJ would have. Yeah, so it felt but Rodney like that King was, was done dirty. So 
his yeah. his being allowed to walk free was part of that civil rights struggle. Yeah, almost. Well, because the Rodney th- uh, the uh, the Rodney King thing was insane. Yeah, because there was it was the first time where there was um, you know how never has their cameras. It was the first time when actual handheld video. Mm. Was th- shown all over America, all over the for, world, and it changed your perception. Because you for those of us who don't know who Rodney King is, yeah. So essentially, what happened is uh, in uh, it was in Los Angeles. Yeah, uh, Rodney King was pulled over, and they were saying, "Oh, he wasn't stopping." The cops were saying, but the the video that we see basically yeah. is he's one black guy, Rodney King, and there was more and more There's cops like going over five, him, five, six, beating seven, the shit out of him with nice six, kicking him, white cops. He's he's down. He's not. They're like, stop resisting, but the guy's. Down, he can't do anything. There's, there's twelve it's of you, just and they're beating yeah. the shit out of him almost to death. Right? Is it wrong to say I've masturbated to that video? No, because that's. I think that's why we're all here. That's the bonding thing we it's have. Truth. Right? <laughs> truth. No, so it's not. It's a terrible video. It's a terrible video. Yeah, but it's that's distressing. But it's distressing. But what it did was it showed kind of the hypocrisy because what they were saying is, no, our officers acted classily. There's nothing. And then the video came out. Yeah, the, the thin blue line. And even with this is why people lost their shit. Even with the video. Yeah. They still got acquitted, I think, the cops. Oh. So people started writing, yeah, like, what the yeah, fuck? Hold yeah, on a second. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. sometimes there's no video. There's yeah. He said, she said, there's a video. Yeah, there's, there's a video there's, and it's still, there's no repercussions. Yeah. So people, they go, you can't have a separate class of people. You can't have a unit. In this case, it was Los Angeles police yeah. uh, officers. You can't have a class of people that can do whatever they want yeah. with yeah. no repercussions. Yeah. So that's why people write it. They went crazy. They said, we're tired of this shit. Yeah. But yeah. it's still happening, though. It's yeah, still happening. Yeah. And, and obviously not like he used to because of cameras everywhere and all that, but it still happens. Sure, George still happens. Floyd, man. So it's like a it's Rodney King rerun. You know what I mean? It, it, it wasn't the exact same thing, George Floyd but it was... Got, he got killed. He got killed. Rodney King survived. I mean, George Floyd was similar thing, caught on video. I was caught on video, cop. yeah. But except the cop was not acquitted. Oh, really? Oh, no, he's not. He, this guy's never getting out. I don't think he could even, if he goes into general population, there's no way he can yeah, get out. The rest of them, though? He'll the get ones, killed. The ones who are also involved. With the, the but the difference is they weren't beating him down. They were just imbeciles looking around at people with cameras not knowing what to do. Nobody knew that he was going to kill him. So them, even though I believe that they should get something for incompetence, because at the very least you're incompetent, it's not the same as the guy uh, Chauvin who... Knew what he was doing. He had his he had his knee on the back of the guy's head for fucking eight minutes, and he was just looking around at people. I don't know, man. If if that was if they were not cops and they were just look at them as human beings, mm-hmm. that's aiding and abetting. No. Well, no. How? Because you're you're not doing. You can do something for within eight minutes to say, "Hey, man, stop that." Well, this was the thing that there was but a, they, a but lot of that's bystanders, you, right? Yeah, yeah. but the around. bystanders didn't do anything either. It's because no one knew Jesus. that that would be the outcome. You don't. They didn't. People didn't know they were watching a murder. That's Until true. Until he was, that's. But it doesn't have to go that far though. It's but, the but, process was. You but know, now, I'm, but we say this now in retrospect because with hindsight, it's twenty twenty. But true. at the time, they just thought, okay, this guy, the common, he's gonna tie him up, and these guys are, are yelling at me. No one, if they were watching a murder, he's even inca- the, he's incapacitating he's inca- that man. Yeah, exactly, and probably too forcefully. But he's. It's not going to result in this man's death. Because if it, people knew that that they were watching a murder, even it could have been random guys in the street. Somebody would have jumped in. They would have lost their mind. They'd be like, well, I'm not going to sit here and watch a murder. But, but nobody knew they were watching a murder you know, it, until after. Also, it shows like how how scared of the police or scared of getting involved people yeah. people are. You know, in in a scene, they'd rather just keep their noses, keep their heads down. But 90, that's why ninety nine percent of people. The biggest thing is accountability, and we don't have that. Uh, any, I don't think anywhere in the world. Well, the the military, let's say the police or the military, depend where you live. There's never any accountability. It's very even here. The so there was this guy. Uh, well, in this instance, now there is from now. Well, you know, more and more people, especially black people, are getting dash cams. Everybody you know, should that, get that dash cams now. This way and that yeah, way. everybody should get dash cams now because a lot of that, I, dude. I have trouble here sometimes. It's 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 a rampant. Um, I don't know position thing. Like, but it's not everyone. Like, I, I have cops that are fans of mine that send me letters and they tell me like, yo, just so you know. Most of us don't do that type of shit. We don't like that either. But it makes it hard for us when, like, guys like me group everyone in and you're making fun of all of us, he goes. But it's not. He goes, none of us like that shit. He goes, we don't like when this stuff happens. It's just that you never see all the good shit we do. You'll see all the bad stuff. They, they come out first. But uh, there was a, what's his name? Kamara, the guy that was here? Kamara. Sorry? What's the guy's name? Mari Kamara, the, the guy here. Oh, yeah, they got beat up on Kremlin. Right here. Two blo- what, what, what? Oh, you're going to freak out. This is crazy. So... There's this, uh, they had blocked the cordon off the entire neighborhood because I remember we were trying to leave and we didn't know what happened. I'd never seen that, those many, that many cops in my life. Uh. Apparently there was, um, 
a police officer went out for routine traffic stop. He stopped this guy, Marek Ka- Camera. He was an Uber driver, I believe, an Uber Eats driver. From uh, what country was he from? Uh, Senegal. I think. Senegal. Uh, hold on, let me Google it. Anyways, so the cop then the 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 cop said that he came out of the car, that guy Camera, and beat the shit out of him and stole his gun. Right. And then ran off. Why did he, for, for what reason? Well, that never happened. Here's the thing. Right. So they're looking for him. They find him. Essentially what happened was, because good thing there's cameras there. So they arrest this guy. They go, he tried to kill a cop. He stole his gun. The guy's like, I never did any of this thing. And then you find out that what actually happened was it was a traffic stop. Uh, someone else went while he was going to the car, mm. to the other guy's car. Someone else went and hit him in the back of the head and stole his gun. It was like maybe gang members. I don't know who the fuck it was. But it wasn't the guy that he claimed. But the cop was at him. He's like, no, it's this guy. So now they're suing. That guy's suing the city for, I think, $1.2 million or something because they put him in jail. The, the whole thing was cordoned off. They were they were Jeez. beating the shit out of him when they took him in because they treated him as like a, an attempted cop killer. A fall guy. And he was just a guy in his car so, who got stopped. So was the cop like leaning in his window and he got thwacked in the back of the head? I think he was going back. I think he went to the guy's oh, car to give him a right, ticket. Right, 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 right. And as he was going back to his car, he got, uh, he got assaulted. By but it was by else. someone else. It was just someone else that didn't like him. And did you see that footage? I don't know if the footage was ever made public, but when the footage, when it was seen by the courts or whatever here, it changed the whole story because the cops got the footage. And the cops were like, holy shit, no, that's a different car that pulls in. It's, this guy's sitting in his car. It's not him. Yeah. yeah. But, they, but they manhandled him before they brought him in because they assumed that what the cop was saying was true. And then it's like, well, the cop was adamant. The cop goes, I know what happened. This guy attacked me. The cop was me. trying to save face. He was trying to save face. Yeah, he was yeah, trying, to save, trying to save his own skin. But he he almost ruined the life of this guy. Yeah. If that other footage hadn't come out, that guy's life was done. Yeah. Oh, oh! For those of you who are filmophiles, yeah. I watched a brilliant Danish movie oh. the other night called The Guilty. And it's this cop and he's on the emergency phones, right? So it's just this, basically just this guy in a room on a headset. That's the movie. And it is fucking gripping, absorbing, wonderful, because you're, you know, you're experiencing what's going on out there through the perspective of this guy who's sort of wondering how much should he, should he intervene and what tactics he uses in order to, you know, basically essentially save this part. Oh, it's just really deliciously done, really but, well done. The, gui- you, the guilty. You know what's interesting about you saying that? Just because that's the kind of side we never see. So every time we see cops now in medium, yeah. we see them as the bad guy, right? And but this is the thing, because yeah, yeah, we don't see all these guys coming out that the, have to do with that stress. The guys saving yeah. lives, and we never hear about it as if that doesn't happen. In like a, like a room like this, everybody's just got head, headphones, headsets, and everything, and they're trying their best. And then one phone call is, "I've been abducted," and they're trying to speak in code, right? And then the next phone call is some drunk twat outside of a nightclub going, fucking send the ambulance, you prick. The bouncer punched my friend. Yeah, he's like, yeah. okay, where are you? He's like, fucking, you know where I am. You just, blah, blah, blah. And he's just abuse, abuse, abuse down the phone. And he clicks it off. And it's just, you know what I mean? It's just like it, it, the pressure and the, fun, the the way, the thanklessness that these people get. Yeah, we and we don't talk about it anymore because like, the conversation shifted. So now we've made, uh, again, it's like a different class. So it's like now they're the enemy, and yeah, of course there's there's bad everything. There's bad doctors, bad cops, bad comedians. There's bad everything. Yeah, like that one who killed Jacko, or the one who killed Prince. They were doctors. Now that's Dave Chappelle's yeah. observation. No, but it's true. <laughs> and Dave Chappelle, this is his thing. Where he goes, he goes, I'm not going to the fucking doctor after I heard about that. He goes, because you think if you're talking to a doctor, a qualified doctor, you're like. Whatever you're giving me, I'm good though, right? I'm not. I'm not gonna fucking die, based on whatever you're gonna give me. And yet, no. Sometimes, sometimes you know what they, they get administer to you kicks your bucket. It's fucking mental. Oh, but you're right. You're right. Law, all law enforcement. It's unhelpful to to badge them that way. You know, and you know the media doesn't do the law enforcement any favors. No, because, of course not. You know, the media is sort of. Seems modus operandi often, you know, is to incite sort of em- emotional collective like, hua, 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 hua. Yeah. so that gets put front and center. And it's because of our survival hardware software, we all collectively go, hua, you know, we're a more, cop that's, we they do it on purpose. Yeah, because yeah. you're more likely to watch and react when it's something emotional, visceral. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so they trick you. That's, that's what they did for so many years now in the media, when especially in the States, when they were dividing people. They're trying to divide them yeah. based on race, gender, yeah, yeah. Uh, sexual old, orientation. Old as murder, if, murder, murder, Murdoch. Yeah, inst- as if any of that shit actually matters in everyday life. None of it does. No. The person matters, like who they are. No, the rest of that shit is 
nonsense. Yeah. And they were they started creating barriers. Oh, that guy. That that's guy's a white you, guy. That guy. That guy's a black guy. That's it's like, it was, what the fuck it was, does it matter? It was unadvised. I said to Dinesh, it was unadvised that he went around in whiteface yesterday yeah. all day in Montreal. Look, <laughs> look, look, I'll tell you something. People said, they didn't say it was classless. They said it was avant-garde. <laughs> An odd choice. I they were like, service. but no one was offended. No one was offended. They were like, are you At offended by a mime, sir? Yeah. Is that a is that a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Just a street performer. <laughs> Why does it have to be political? <laughs> look at this. Look, I did that earlier on the skirting boards of our apartment. Tell them how you, you know, got one cut. One of those uh, those uh, heater things, that, like little skirting heater, whatever. And I just stuck my foot under it, looking out the window, and it. Fucking, it chopped my fucking toe off. It was done on I purpose. I had to stitch it back on. It was done on purpose. You know that, right? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Oh, here's a question. Yeah. What's the thumb on your foot called? What? Isn't oh, it yeah. just a toe? Aren't they all just toes? They're called they're called uh, feet thumbs. In, Aren't they all in, toes? In they're Ireland. just toes, right? <laughs> I mean, why do we call this a thumb then? Because, mate. Because it's a thumb, isn't it? I, you're right though, because we have the thumb, the ring, the pinky, the index, and the middle. So they each get their own name, but nobody cares about feet. No, just toes. <laughs> They're all cares. toes. They're all toes. Speak for yourself, yeah. dear. O it's, only, uh, only hobbits. It's the, the only people that care about toe, toes really mm. is what uh, Tolkien, Tolkien, and, and Quentin Tarantino. That's Quint it. And both have the word toe in their names. <laughs> no, no, coincidence? No. I think not. <laughs> Tarantino. <laughs> toe. Tarantino, that's amazing. Wait, what are you going to say, Poseidon? It has uh, four names. The Hallux, Big Toe, Great Toe, or the Innermost Toe. Fuck you. What? The, the innermost? It? What? Foot it's the outermost. Well, What's no, because it's, in, it's inner, isn't it? Because it's in, inside your body? In, well, <laughs> it's like it's in the... Towards the, the inside, inside of your body? Yeah, yeah, it's on the inside lane. That's you know? stupid. <laughs> and then the, the, the pinky toe. The inner toe. Who has a toe inside themselves? That's That's a disturbing image. The one next to the pinky toe, is it the ring toe? Uh, the ring yeah, toe. Yeah, actually, it's called the ring toe. <laughs> that is so stupid. Or That's the fourth stupid. toe. <laughs> Who's putting rings on their toes? Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches and hoes in Montreal. That's not true. That's not true. Who's no, I've seen it on guys, too. That's yeah. de it's decorative, isn't it? Really? People are putting rings on their toes? I didn't know there's toe rings. Listen, there's toe rings, man. Rings on your fingers for Because it's decorative, man. I think it's decorative. So it the makes, same uh, reason... I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying it's it should never happen. What I'm saying is I don't see it. I had an ankle bracelet for a while with tassels. Tassels. No, I didn't. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody would be able to rock it, that would be him. It's the ankle bracelet. Ankle bracelet. I you know I I find all that deeply deeply uncomfortable. Ankle bracelets, normal bracelets, watches, rings. I can't wear none of it. No, it bothers you. Yeah, I, the only bracelet I can wear is a neck bracelet. A neck bracelet. But it's true, he does like uh, the chains around his neck, or not chains, but in general, he likes putting stuff around him. But no, yeah, there's it, never anything on your hands. It gives yeah. me a sort of a faint religious air. What's this know? one? What? What's this? Chain? I got this in a cereal box. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to. <laughs> That's Captain Crunch right there. Cut out 30 squares out of the back, send it off, and you get the. You get the no, this is, a, this is a very, very sort of a ornate mala bead, where it's like a, it's like a Buddhist rosary bead, right? That's the Buddha bead. And you, you know what? In Buddhism, there's a nice little finger fact for you. The index finger is seen as the finger of the ego, right? So they never touch the mala beads with that finger. You know, your, your traditional Buddhist monks. So they'll go, they'll work through the beads on their uh, mantra. So for example, Om Mani Padme, 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 Om Mani. Whatever tempo you like. And you go right round the whole thing, but you never cross the Buddha bead. It's a bit like the streams in Ghostbusters. You never cross that Buddha bead. You just turn it back round and go back the other way. So you never complete the circle, I suppose. Do, 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 do. Seems like a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> Could you uh, do that same chant in uh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves' voice? So, <laughs> what do you mean? We There's such a thing as suffering and pain. We can't cross the Buddha bead. <laughs> <laughs> you don't cross the Buddha, my beads. <laughs> he was actually quite lovely in the film. He was very good, I thought. He really well, was. I like Keanu. Yeah, and it was yeah. younger Keanu right. as well. When he was less wooden. I find him, he's sort of, he's impenetrably wooden these days. Sorry, Keanu, but I say it because I love and respect Maybe it's him. the roles they give him. You can say that, but it's, you know, when you're in Keanu Reeves' position, it's yeah. what you bring in. It's like, really, 
he's the fulcrum of the money. He can kind of, he can interpret a character, you know, mostly speaking, any way he wants, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, but he chooses to do that way. And I, I don't know, it's just not my style. Not my style. I saw him in a movie where uh, two young women go to his house. It's a yeah. rainy night. And they trick him into banging him. Yeah. And, and, th yeah. and they ruin his life. What's that movie called? What's that movie it was called? Death Proof or it no, was no, one no, of the Grindhouse it, movies. It was kind of like a Grindhouse movie, but what's it called beside? You remember the Canaries oh. movie we saw? I think that uh, was, no. it was Eli Roth. I think that movie. Eli Roth did that. Yeah. yeah we yeah. watched it. We did a movie night with our fans on Patreon and we oh, were watching it. Yeah. What was the movie called? I'm trying to find it. The really? Next House or some shit. Patreon.com forward slash Pantelis. Yeah, how'd you know? Because I just thought I just <laughs> saw it in my brain, man. He's in charge of marketing. Yeah. Yeah. What was it called, Poseidon? They pay me I'm in. Uh, for it. Just type in Keanu Reeves filmography. Coffee and. That's what I'm doing. And. Uh, he, cream, he hasn't done that much. He's can done I, quite a few movies. Bill and Poseidon, can I have another one of them? That was delicious. Was it? You liked it, huh? Yeah, it was yeah. fucking delicious. Oh, knock, knock. Spasmodic. Knock, knock. Who's there? Exactly. <laughs> two, <Reeves>. two, who was? <laughs> two, two charming young ladies. In. But it was funny because uh, he's like, he's wooden. You're right. He's a little wooden at moments where you wouldn't be. So they're taking off his clothes. He's like, no, we shouldn't be doing this. My, my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was quite good, that movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, yeah I think they good. kill everyone in the end. Yeah. yeah. But you, no, oh, no, I won't say it. But oh, No, I'm not going to say it. What, what, what? No, I was going to spoil the movie. Oh, don't spoil yeah, the movie. No, no, People want to watch it. Spoil the movie. It's called the Nockety Nockety. <laughs> In Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... Le Nock, Le Nock. Oh, bro, we were looking. We had a list one time. Was it with you, Poseidon? I forgot what podcast it was. We had a list of... Oh, it was him. On Two Drink Minimum, he found a list of movies in France. Like, they changed oh. the titles. But for oh, some reason, yeah. they were adding sex to things that didn't need sex. Well, it's always a bit of a, a little garnish of sex. Like, <laughs> goes a long way. Remember the movie, the movie? Remember the movie Swordfish? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like three people and sex. Like, it was just <laughs> random sex. And we're like, what are you doing? Why is this? John Travolta <laughs> having angry sex with yeah, yeah. various different yeah. Hollywood ladies. Yeah, that's not a I title. Don't know why I speak yeah. Russian. <laughs> that's not a real title. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had people come up to me uh, and go, I really like that film you were in. Title. And I go, what? I was in that? <laughs> what? I was in that? In different territories, even in different English speaking territories. Remember they when you were changed the name. Young Adult Sex Prison, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, in the UK, it's called Misfits. You're yeah, like, oh yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where did you watch it? I was watching the French version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Juvenile yeah. Offenders Register. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, I was not in that. Well, I wasn't in that. <laughs> oh, you have, fun, uh, you have fun memories of all the shit you used to do back then? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, we were wildlings, man. Wild. We just sort of, uh, they just let us be churlish, childish, you know, improvisational, tantrum, everything. They just let us run wild and free so that we could kind of cultivate um, a, a, a sort of, a, you know, a misfitsy vibe on set. Yeah. I was a bit bonkers back in those days. I suppose I'm a small bit bonkers, and but I'm, I'm just more habitual these days. Probably a similar level of bonkers, but I just hide it better. You were crazy then, but you were looking for yourself. You're crazy now, but you're yourself. You found yourself. Yeah, you know yeah. who you are. Yeah. yeah, that's it exactly. You know how I know that now. You know who you are because of the book. Because you're writing, you're writing now, and yeah. you're going into book. That's how I know. Is that because that's a whole other part of you? We had never discussed that. We discussed the acting. We discussed um, everything that pushed you to do theater and how you saw it. Never once back then had it come out that you're like, you know what? I have other things, short stories that I want to put down and got give others. to the world. Pulp fiction, short stories, pornographic novellas. Oh, you're going to get it all. Yeah. It's coming in October too. It's not even far. Yeah. Man. Also, I'm releasing a heavy breathing soundtrack <laughs> as an Atmos. <laughs> as a meditation. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. <sighs> but the heavy breathing isn't done by me. So my overweight yeah, different neighbor special, clad. Yeah. <laughs> different special guests. <laughs> Sometimes they're heavy breathing together. Yeah. It's a whole other experience. This kid I know who's got asthma. <laughs> Man, it's coming out in October. Yeah, I think so. You're, October you're... the 22nd. In in Ireland, I suppose, to say it'll be available worldwide via a link that I'm going to put on my Instagram. So uh, as of, I don't know, in the next kind of few weeks, and then it comes out in like hardback version on like October the 22nd. So that's nice. I'm quite proud of that as a little sort of um, creative uh, branch, you know, a different creative exploration. You can be an author. 
Yeah, I'm an author now. It's badass. Doing a second book and all. It's official. Yeah. Is the second book related or completely different? No, it's different? completely unrelated. So I just, uh, you know, I've, it's, I'm a bit shitting myself because, well, the the first one, the 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 kind of, okay, now there's a contract involved. Yeah. The first one, at least the bones of the scaffolding or something was already there by the time that contract showed up. Whereas the second one, <laughs> like, what do I want this to be about? I'm, you know, I've written sort of oodles of sort of raw material type, do you know what I mean? For yeah. sifting through later. But uh, I'm still trying to figure out what it's going to be about, that book. And then you think you I like writing books, yeah. You're going to take a while and just write? I yeah, know you're going to yeah. do some theatre coming up, but... Yeah, I'm going to do some theatres. I'm going to do uh, a play called Endgame by Samuel Beckett. Did you ever hear that play? No. Waiting for Godot. In fact, both of those plays were written in French, originally. Okay. By an Irish fella called Sam Beckett. But he went to Paris kind of early on in his career and in fact became sort of like aide, assistant, friend, confidant to James Joyce, right? So kind of in the later part of Joyce's life, as he was going blind and everything, Samuel Beckett was very, very, very much in his life. And he was like a super hyper clever clogs kind of sophisticate who wrote poems and was well versed in ancient Greek and, you know, all the things of a sophisticate in the early 20th century kind of was. But also had kind of had this fundamental resentment at the very centre of his, of his existence that he existed at all. And that's kind of what his plays are about. They're about these characters who are at odds with the fact that they exist. And that's what's so interesting about En attendant Godot or Fin de Partie, Endgame, uh, that they're just these fucking characters who are going through these charades, these habitual charades over and over and over again in order to ignore the fact that everything else is dead. And none of it is real. Yeah, and they're just waiting to be dead. You know, they just kind of... It's good that it's an uplifting piece. <laughs> <laughs> but it is! This is the thing, it's really fucking funny. And that's why he's a completely inimitable author, Samuel Beckett, because... Nobody really ever wrote like him before or since. You know, he wrote these desperately, despairingly, sort of gloomily, but also incredibly funnily Irish plays, you know, and has a lot, has had a lot of very talented copycats since then. But, uh, you know, it's real good fodder. If you're an actor and you like to kind of really sort of uh, lean into the weeds of surrealism, do you know what I mean, which yeah. I seem to get a kick out of. And I think that's what the book was very interesting because there's a lot of mad surreal stuff in the book as well. I think I'm a small bit of a surrealist. Or, uh, in other words, uh, a life denier. <laughs> no, not a life denier, a reality denier. Like, oh, reality. It's all so boring. Look at everybody just sitting at their tables eating lunch. Why doesn't somebody kick a table over or something? And that would help change reality? That's the maximum amount of change you want is kicking people's tables <laughs> yeah, over. Yeah, and then, look, and then remove look, them. I don't, want, I don't want too much of a ruckus. We've been kicked out of three restaurants because of that fucking bullshit. you got to stop that. <laughs> you got. I can't take you anywhere anymore. Do you know what? Our mutual friends, right? We went yeah. out for dinner, right, with our friend Sadia. And she, by, you know, by the end of dinner, we'd done two or three shots. I was like, fucking hell. You don't have, like, you don't have, have fair stamina here in Montreal. I was drunk as a skunk last night. Yeah. Drunk, drunker than I would have liked to have been. That's why you're going to end up moving here. It's uh, it's pulling you in. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I think my liver would just uh, would, <laughs> would just pack a bag and go, you're moving where? I'm, <laughs> I'll, I'll stay I'll here. I'll see you. That's what happens to a lot of young hockey players when they get drafted to this team here. Their first uh, couple of seasons don't go that well. There's, too many, there's too many distractions. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> there's too many distractions. They can't focus on hockey. Well, yeah. you know. Get a prep with the bread and the cheese. But you're doing this in February, right? The the play? Yeah. Yeah. Four weeks in January rehearsal. Okay. And then about an eight, nine week run till the end of March, sort of early April. In Dublin's famous Gate Theatre, which is a theatre has kind of been there since always. And uh, theatre I've always really, really loved to play. It's one of those kind of old British theatres. Do you know what I mean? Lots of prosceniums and red velvet curtains everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, you know. It's like an antique in itself. And the very other interesting thing about this play is the fact that 
you know, there's two parts in it, ham and clove, and they sort of need each other, and they kind of, in spite of everything, kind of love each other, but they also really hate each other. And Frankie Boyle, who's a comedian that I'm always going on about to you, yeah. who I think... I don't know how familiar you are with Frankie. Have you seen his stuff? No, but I will because you keep telling me that I have to meet him. Well, yeah, because y you have the same sense of humor as Frankie Boyle, and he is just the caped crusader of jokes, man. Okay, so he's a and free speech guy. He's, he's a, yeah. yeah, and he's as gallows as the humor can get, my bro. Okay. He's so clever and funny and brilliant. And he hasn't, to my knowledge anyway, done, you know, like a proper acty full-on play like the character of ham it's a it's a very challenging role you know and he's not a you know he obviously he's a stage master he's been on you know he's fantastic stand-up comedian but this is an all-new challenge so people are going to be really intrigued to see him doing the part of ham in endgame in the uk because he's one of those dudes he's quite subversive and he never has to promote his gigs really do you know what i mean he's just he just does them yeah because he's 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 so his voice is so uh, valuable to society. You know, he's one of those dudes who's so clever and brilliant and just like Chappelle, you know, and yourself, just people who just Chapp just turn down the valve of tension. On yeah, the, Chappelle's on something else, man. I love. Uh, oh yeah, oh. he's wonderful. Yeah, he. You know that Chappelle started before he was eighteen. I think he was sixteen going to the clubs. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. surprise me. That's all he knows. That's yeah. why he's the best out of all yeah. of us. Yeah. Just has it in his bones, doesn't he? Yeah. And Frankie's like that. Frankie's been doing it since before he was sober. So I'm guessing Frankie probably gets the pulse of what's happening in the, in the UK. He just has his finger on it. And yeah. He could just, yeah, he's a yeah. cultural and political commentator and he's he's quite a surrealist. And so it was a real coup to get him to do the play, you know. Did you have to try hard? Or no, what? actually, no. And he's represented by the same agency. And me and my agent, Rose who's a beloved friend as well, we were like, ooh, wouldn't it be interesting to do Endgame, get Frankie Boyle to play the other part? Is Rose coming down here at all? Well, you know, COVID, man. COVID, yeah. oh, travel, yeah. all that bollocks. So not this time, but she normally would. Yeah, I liked her. Ah, oh, she's brilliant, man. Yeah. And she's as much of a producer as she is an agent. Do you know what I mean? She's an, an incredible producer. You know, one of those people who... I, you know, I've struggled to, you know, at the grassroots level, putting something together. I mean, you know more about this than I would, but I struggled to kind of put the pieces together. She just has that in her bones, you know. She's someone who's able to kind of generate momentum for a project that doesn't make things happen. Yeah, it doesn't exist and and relies on the labor of others to exist. You know what I mean? And she's but you, able. You to, need a person like that. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and she's invaluable. But anyway, so all of this was a lot, mostly her idea, but it's. It's come together really beautifully in in very intriguing fashion, because uh, and also before Christmas we had a Zoom read, you know, with potential investors and we had with Frankie and a potential director and myself and Rose and another producer and everybody was on. It was like, and part of it was to see what Frankie would do because it's just a different discipline, you know, it's a different thing. And he was fucking amazing. It was like hairs on the back of my neck thinking about it because. You know, the character of Ham is written on the page, his exclamation points, he's quite shouty. You know, he says, he says, ah, forgive me. He goes, and then silence. I go, I said, forgive me, you know, to the other character. And he's, yeah, I heard you. You know, it's that sort of very kind of authoritarian type of character. Yeah, yeah. And then Frankie played it in just in the complete opposite way. He was quite sort of demure and quite sort of relaxed and kind of almost resigned in a very relaxed way and everybody went oh it works god i wouldn't have read it that way but it really it really does something and there was a buzz there was a crackle you know even over zoom so i was we were all like Phew, you know that gave it the kind of momentum it needed to actually happen so the potential investors turned into investors i yeah. exactly well different ones did yeah, but yeah ultimately god damn so, would so you that's exciting would you ever do stand up I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 a discipline I think that takes justifiably takes years. So to do it would be a novelty thing. You know, it wouldn't be like a real strong left turn into it. Definitely not, I'd say, but no, I I, I don't know. I just don't uh it scares me. It, I, it does it scares the shit out of me doing stand-up comedy. 
Because I'd want to feel very prepared, you know. I wouldn't want to be the, at least the you're first. alone with a mic. You're naked. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's why I admire stand-ups and clowns. Yeah, clowns are are actors with no words. You know, it's very very. Some of them are also psychopathic murderers. You got to yes. watch out for the clowns. Exactly, especially if they're in the storm drain. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> how'd you get in there? What are you doing down there? <laughs> so, have you been eating children again? No. I found the end of that it movie. Fucking part two. Sp- I didn't see part two, but the first one, all the kids are, they they weren't eaten. They're yeah. just somewhere floating, like in a video game. Yeah, like, yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. It's like, that was, that was such a PG move. You're like, yeah. well, you know what? Happily ever after. Like Everyone's really, going happily ever after now. We have to crush this, people's dreams more. Yeah, we do. Listen, you keep having dreams because we'll fucking crush them. You hear me? Yeah. And we're going to crush people's dreams right now. You know that, right? Bye. We have to end the podcast because I got a gig to go to and what? you decided to eat lunch at four o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. It's a French brunch. <laughs> yeah. It's an Irish brunch. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was necessary. I know. It's uh, normally the longer necessary. episodes with him. Yeah, it was lovely. We sat yeah. in this place in Montreal called Jardin Nelson. Nelson. Right in the middle of the old town there. How'd you like it though? It was beautiful. Oh, it was just glorious. They had like sort of jazz covers of tunes going on with a double bass in one corner it's so have you been into that space it's fucking I, I don't know if beautiful. I have it sounded familiar but no, when no he roof. went no it's roof. no roof it's just a facade the front of the building I think so it's very very cool I'd recommend long line to wait right yeah sometimes yeah because yeah. yeah, you go in via that square but luckily we got fairly lucky but yeah we, we did we had a long nice stretchy lunch just you're gonna come with me to the gig now you guys said you want to watch me in French yeah why not? I won't take long. I'll be on for like twenty minutes, and then we'll we'll you're go fu- somewhere you're else. Funny, right? I'm not gonna make that promise. <laughs> <laughs> but Robbie, anything uh, that the fans should know about? Anything to plug so they could check you out in? Apart from the book, and as soon as the book, if you give me the pre-order link, I'm gonna post it everywhere. You're yeah. the biz, Penta. Yeah, fuck it, the book. Yeah. Listen, all right, I'm in this for sales, baby. Bottom line, <laughs> numbers. <laughs> That's all that matters to me. New York bestseller coming up. The yeah. the book is called Disappearing Act. A host of other characters in 16 short stories by this guy. And then the cover is, is me. Robert all, Sheehan, all Esquire. Surreal. Yeah, exactly. PhD, SSC, BSC, which means silver swimming certificate, bronze swimming certificate. Paralympian <laughs> winner. Yeah, Paralympian winner, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Non cheating. <laughs> Brown belt. Yeah. Karate. Just put all that in the, in the, in the fly leaf, just inside. Inside the hardback. Yeah, Disappearing Act. That's what I'm promoting right now. Screw Umbrella Academy, that show on, <laughs> on Netflix. You all know about that anyway. You all already watched that. That's brilliant. It is brilliant. So Umbrella Academy, we've got the book coming out. Check the links in the description. Make sure you pre-order. Thank you both for coming. God bless you. And tell God bless side. you all. I'd get naked in here. And I, I want to get naked because it's so fucking hot. This prison cell, cause we can't trust ourselves.